Jose, what's good, my G? Good, my G. All blessings. The first time I met you, I was executive producing Pharrell's radio show, Other Tone. Oh, shit. You were the first Latin artist that we had on there. So for me, being Latino, it's a, it a special moment for me to see both worlds come together. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, bro. I always like to start interviews by taking it back so we could get a little bit of context into the journey of your life. If we were to see a, a movie of J Balvin's life, that opening sequence pans down into Medellin, what are we seeing? What are we hearing? I was really uh, a crazy little guy. <laughs> I was, was like uh, curious of everything. You know, I just wanted to know a little bit of everything. Uh, uh, I was born in a middle class uh, and uh, full of like creative, a creative mind, a creative, a creative mind and a lot of imagination, you know, like I was, was just like thinking like weird stuff. I, <laughs> I was not normal, definitely, and I'm not. <laughs> Do you remember what those first musical memories were? Yeah, I mean, at the time I was listening to uh, Vanilla Ice, you know, uh, Criss Cross. That, that was like what I loved at that time, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, wu -Tang Clan, and uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much what I used to listen at that time. Almost Ice Cube, or, yeah, also Ice Cube too. Yeah, a lot of hip hop. Do you remember what that moment was in your life when you decided you wanted to be an artist? Yeah, it was like 18, 19 years old. You know, I, I was studying uh, international business at the university and uh, I was just not happy to be there. You know, I was just not enjoying the fact of being in a class and getting all this info that I actually wasn't feeling, you know. and. Uh, and my parents were doing a lot of effort to pay me the university, so I was like, this is not. I remember one day, uh, one of my friends came to me and he was like, like, do you imagine, you know, like Juanes or Shakira in this classroom? You know, I was like, no. So what are you waiting for? And I was like, you're right. So I would just like, you know, got out of from the classroom. I called my mom, I was like, you know what, mom? I just want to be an artist. Like, that's all I want to do, you know. I don't, I don't want to follow this, and and it just doesn't make me happy. And uh, and she supported me, she supported me, and my, my 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 father too. It was more hard for my dad, for my mom wasn't. Uh, but I'm grateful for that because they let me express myself, you know. And that's why every time they ask me about something to to that I can say to the youth. I'm always going straight up to their parents too, to be like, let, the, let your sons, let your kids be what they want, you know, don't, don't tell them what to do because what you think is right for them, it might be not, you know, so you got to let them find, find, find their way. You know, as first generation immigrants, you know, our, our parents sacrifice so much to, uh, to come to this, this country, they want us to have those safe jobs, right? They want you to be a doctor, they want you to be a lawyer, you know, and, and there's nothing bad with that, but if you love it, you know, if not, you're creating one more frustrated people in the world, you know, and, 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 and it just, it's not, it's not right. Take me back to when you were 16. I know you uh, came to the States and you lived in Oklahoma for a while and then you moved over to New York. What were those first uh, few days like? I mean, I know for me, when I was eight and I moved here from Argentina, those, those first few days were a bit of a culture clash. What was it like for you when you came to the States? I mean, when I, was, when I left Medellin and, and I went to Oklahoma, I think Oklahoma was way, like they were in the past. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was going to the future, you know, and when I were there, I was like, this is way true back then, my own country. You know, like actually my country is the future, <laughs> looking at, what I was living in, in, in the town that I was living called Atoka. Uh, it was really weird to me. And that was my, like, my first experience as a exchange student. And it wasn't nice at all, you know? And, and, but after that, when I left, 
I went to New York and that's when, that was the vibe that I was looking for. You know, that future and that, that huge place full of opportunities and dreams and inspiration. So that's the reason why I like, I'm between Medellin and New York because definitely New York was the reason why I like open my mind and be like, oof, let's, 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 let's focus on this, let's do, let's do what it takes, you know, to be one day, like, at that time it was like uh, 50 Cent, Eminem, you know, uh, JC with Rock Aware, Diddy with Sean John. So I was just like, wow, I want to be also an entrepreneur, you know, like, not just music, I, I want to be on the billboards and, and promoting my own brand and stuff like that, you know, so it, it, this is the city that inspired me the most. I know back then you had a lot of odd jobs, you know, dog walking, being a carpintero, painting, you know, doing all kinds of stuff just to survive. Did you have an idea back then you'd be one of the biggest artists in the world? Well, I'm not one of the biggest artists in the world, but I definitely knew that I, that I wanted to be what I wanted to be. You know, I, 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 I was thousand percent for sure about, about what I wanted, and I knew that I was gonna make it. When I was painting the houses, I was like, I'm good, like, yeah, I'm doing this, but I'm not where I'm going. And I, I used to just be like singing and, and writing songs while I was painting, and, and my boss at that time was just like, you're crazy, man, you're not going nowhere. I'm like, so good. And now that the time, you know, passed by, some of my friends, one of my friends that used to work with me painting houses told the guy like, you know who J Balvin is? Like, yeah, of course I know who J Balvin is. But like, that's the guy you used to make jokes and fun of him working for you. That guy that you already know is the guy you used to make jokes where he was painting houses. So it's beautiful. It's not that I hate the guy. I'm grateful. You know, he just gave me more energy. You know, and uh, but it, that's that that's the mindset. You know, like I knew it. I knew it since I was really young that. I was gonna make my dream come true, but I still feel that I'm an upcoming artist. You know, I feel still think that I have a lot of things to bring to the table and to elevate the culture, not just with music, not just music. You know, different ways to approach. When you were painting houses and doing all those odd jobs, where does that confidence come from to know, hey, one day I'm gonna be singing, one day I'm gonna be on top of the world? My mom has to be a lot in that way of, you know, that I, that, I, that I think. It's like, she always, told, she always told me that we're all the same, you know, that if one day I meet the president or somewhere or whatever, he's just like me, you know? And uh, she made me believe that I, that I was gonna make it since, since I decided to be an artist, you know? She was like, you're gonna make it, you know? And, and uh, that's, that's beautiful, you know, like, that's what parents should do, you know. I'm not saying they're perfect. My parents are perfect because they're not. But once you let your kid or your son follow their dream, just, you know, give them the whole vibe to make it happen, you know. Tell them that you believe in them, you know. And, and, and that's even the small responsibility when your people, when your parents believe in you because it's like, okay, now I've got to prove them that I, that this is what I really want, you know? So my mom really put that pressure on me <laughs> because when I, when I say I wanted to be an artist, then she was like, okay, make sure that you're gonna be one of the best, you know, and, and I'm still working for it, but it helps me a lot. In your documentary that came out a couple months ago, you really showed us another side to your life, you know? We get to see behind the curtains to, to see you when you're not performing, battling with anxiety, all kinds of different stuff. Why was it important for you to show us that side of your life? I mean, uh, nothing was planned on that, you know? It was a documentary, so it's not, it's not a script, you know, it wasn't a movie. You know, so, so yeah, I'm a human being like anybody else, you know? I have my good, my bad things, I have uh, mental health, you know? It's basically one of the new, you know, uh, biggest virus. You know, it's, it's a pandemic, you know, and, uh, and yeah, I have to, you know, embrace people about talking about mental health is okay, you know, and, 
not feel that you're weak or you're less or you're crazy because you're, you're suffering from something that is way more powerful than you, you know? And uh, as a chemical disbalance, uh, there's ways of and levels of anxiety, depression, or, you know, any mental health sickness, but it is a sickness, you know? It's like if you have a broken leg, you gotta go to the doctor and, and fix it, you know? Not because it's gonna, not because you have a broken leg and you're gonna be so positive, like, it's gonna heal, it's gonna heal, it's gonna, no, it's not gonna heal, you gotta go to the doctor. You know, the same thing with your brain. Uh, and also you gotta go, have, have good habits to help your brain, you know, like, do exercise, sleep good, trying to be a better person, you know, that's what I'm trying to do every day. For, you know, so long we've had this machista world that, you know, it's like, oh, you got to be strong all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's important for us to show that being vulnerable and, and having anxiety is okay. And as Latino men, it's okay to, to, to show our vulnerability and that we don't have to be super, superhuman all the time. I definitely think that the bigger you want to show yourself, the smallest people feel you. And the real and the small you show yourself, the biggest they see you. You know, so just be you, you know, like, I'm here, I'm Jose, you know, I could die anytime. You just walk around, walk out from this place and I can get you, you know, get hit by a car and I'm gone. You know, like, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a superhuman, you know, I, I'm just another human being. Yes, I have a public life, but that doesn't mean that I'm over anything, you know? And uh, that's why my album is called Jose, because it's like, forget about J Balvin, you know? I'm just another human being, you know? That's, that's my name. This is my real name, Jose. I would love people to call me Jose instead of J Balvin, you know? And, and that's part of my journey right now. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, I created J Balvin, that's cool, but now call me by my name, you know? It's just like, that's me, you know, and I'm focusing myself right now, you know, I'm focusing how to be better, how to manage more my mental health, not just with the medication, with, you know, with, with my psychologist, you know what I'm saying, with a psychologist, with, ter you know, therapies, and, uh, and finding what makes me happy, you know, like skydive, you know, having a coffee in the morning, read a good book, listen to a great podcast, you know, try to learn something new every day. That's what Jose, you know, makes, makes him happy. It's funny, you actually uh, just answered two of my questions before I even asked them. I was gonna ask you why you named the album Jose, and also I was gonna ask what, what makes you happy, so you're doing my job for me. On the album, you've done a lot of uh, amazing collaborations. Sometimes it's with some of the biggest artists in the world, and you also take the time to work with some of the emerging artists. Why is it important for you to, to also show love to the emerging artists? You know, because I just have respect for for any type of art that I love, you know, and I don't care if you're famous or not, as long as I feel that, you know, we can do something together and this uh, mutual respect, you know, and uh, you cannot buy respect. You know, you can buy things, but you cannot buy respect. You know, you cannot buy people taste. You know, you cannot buy people to listen to you. There's no way. You know, you cannot buy people to vibe with you. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's the fact that I admire the people that I work with, you know, and, 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 uh, and I have the blessing that the people that I admire, they vibe with me too, you know? So, uh, I work from the biggest superstars to the new upper coming artists that are just like, they're just known maybe in their country or in their cities, you know, but I have the vision that they're gonna be the next ones, you know, so that's what I do, you know, because I always dream to have an artist with power, which I'm not saying that I have power, but someone that has like, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like a career, you know, more established and to guide me, you know, or, or just like give me the chance to, to be in one of their songs and have more exposure. You know, I did not have that. So why I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing with the new generation when, so I'm not cutting that chain. You know, I have to cut that chain and be like, let's embrace this, you know, let's, let's, let's grow up together, you know. You know, you know, uno mas uno, three, you know, one plus one is three. 
you know, so that's, that's how I see it, you know, like, you have to, you know, embrace the culture and, and I re have a real personal view of the Latino gang, you know, like, I think the Latinos, we, we deserve to be at any place, you know, at any, at, in any meeting, doesn't matter the level, you know, we are global citizens, you know, and we deserve to be, you know, as great as anybody else. I definitely want to talk more about Latino Gang in a second, but first I, I want to take it uh, to the Poblado remix on your album. Uh, can you talk a little bit about why it was important for you guys to jump on that remix and what it meant for Colombia? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, because I'm really proud of them because they didn't need us to make a hit. They made their own hit, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's amazing, you know, like, that's the way it should be, you know, like, at least like prove that you're really hungry and that you really want to make your, you know, your career, you know, taking it serious. And then when I heard that the song was just so powerful and I was like, wow, you know, like I'm so proud of these kids that they didn't, you know, need us, you know, to, you know, make it ahead. Uh, but then we got together, you know, me and Nicky Jam and Carol G and we were like, you know, let's jump in this, you know, and, and, and yes, we elevate the song, but the song was already, was already a hit. You know, we just took it to another level, but the matter, it was a hit. That's why we jump on it, because we vibe with it, we respect it, you know? So, and also at the same time, we're making a statement because Nikki also is Colombian, you know, like he's, yeah, he's, he was born in Puerto Rico, but his, his comeback was in Medellin, Colombia, you know, and so yeah, he counts as Colombian 100%. Definitely want to talk a little bit more about Latino gang. Why is it so important for you to use your light to, to really empower the Latino movement? It's just something personal, you know, like to me, you know, watching history, you know, like, especially in the U.S., for example, you know, like seeing, you know, minorities, you know, like the Afro-American, you know, people, they have suffered a lot, you know, and we know that, you know, it's not a lie, you know, they suffer from slavery and a lot of worse and a lot of bad things, you know, happened to them, like, not, a, not, not millions of years ago. We're talking about just nothing, like 80, 90 years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, really hard moments. And also, the Latinos as an immigrant, as an immigrants, we had a tough life, you know, and we still have, you know, and, and, uh, and I was one of them, you know, I was, I was working here as an immigrant when I was a kid, you know, and, and looking for a chance to make the American dream, you know, so I know how it feels like, you know, I know how it feels to be in Oklahoma and feel rejected because I was Latino, you know. Uh, so I really took it personal, not on, a, not, not on a way that I like, there's no hate in my heart. I just wanna, you know, like, prove that we are powerful, you know, that we're, we have taste, that we are, that we, we deserve to be, as I told you, at, at any place, at any moment, in every level, in every aspect, you know, like from being in, in Paris Fashion Week in the front row to be talking with the President of the United States to be, you know, doing statements like having my own Jordans or being the, being the skin of Fortnite or, you know, or talking about mental health for the United Nations, which is one of my missions. like. There's a lot of things that I want to do that elevate our culture, you know, and, and it's something that I really have personal, you know, like I, I, I just want to, you know, tell and show the world once again that we are relevant, you know, and, 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 that, and it's a blessing to be Latino. Having grown up between uh, Argentina and, and the Bay Area and, you know, having one foot in hip hop and one foot in Latin, I'm always really fascinated by artists like yourself who kind of have one foot in both worlds. Uh, you know, obviously you're inspired by, you know, people like Kanye and Pharrell. Uh, can you talk about that duality of having one foot in each world? Yeah, because I was raised with hip hop, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the, I started listening to a lot of rock and, 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 and metal, but definitely hip hop was my heart, you know, and, uh, so I always wanted to know all these 
moguls and entrepreneurs and and my idols, you know, and and, and it's a blessing that I can get to know them, that I can talk straight up with them directly, you know, like I, you know, I have, you know, my, I can talk to JC, I can talk to Kanye, you know, to Pharrell, to Diddy, you know, to all the biggest superstars in the planet, entrepreneurs, and we're just the same, you know, we have same vision, you know, and, and I know they have a lot of struggles for being black, you know, so I try just to understand that same way and how to elevate my Latino culture, you know, so I'm always been, yeah, a big fan of hip hop, so that's why, of course, I learned a lot about fashion, following them, you know, and, and art, and, uh, and, and architecture, you know, there's a lot of things that I love that I can express myself. If you had to pick three albums that represent who Jose is, which albums would you pick? Uh, first one will be uh, Nevermind. Why Nevermind by Nirvana? Nirvana just was a, the change of a new generation. You know, uh, and it really makes me feel a lot of love for music. Uh, after that, the Black Album from Metallica and then Chronic 2001, because like I started listening a lot more to rock, and then like, like a masterpiece in hip hop, it's, on a, it's gonna be forever, at least until now, Chronic 2001 from Dr. Dre. Yeah, I still remember where I was when I first heard Chronic 2001. I mean, growing up in California, you couldn't escape that. I mean, it was knocking everywhere. It's crazy, it's crazy. It's crazy. What would you tell the 15 year old Jose if, uh, if you had a chance to talk to him, seeing what you've seen now? I would tell him that it was, you know, congrats, you know, because that I'm proud of him, you know, that he keeps working. But also, next time, if there's another life, I'll be like, remember to take time for yourself, you know. But I think I still, I still have time for it, you know, God willing. So, so yeah, like, find the balance. Appreciate you taking the time. I know you got a lot of stuff you got to do. Looking forward to doing this stuff face to face when we're done with all this COVID stuff. Uh, as always, appreciate you for, uh, for being an ambassador for our culture and uh, helping us knock some of these doors down that, uh, that we got to knock down. Let's go. It's our time, man. Much love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love us. Appreciate you. Respect, my G. Take care. Be safe.